kids. It doesn't matter if you love them or you hate them, most of us will have to deal with them at some point in our lives. Whether we have children of our own, nieces and nephews that visit periodically, or just have to listen to them screeching in the supermarket because they can't get the toy that they want. Just shut up! I'm trying to buy my snacks! Even in the world of video games, we can't get away from the little blighters, and though some are perfectly reasonable tiny people, others are so maddening, they make us want to launch them through the nearest window. Obviously we wouldn't, that would be wrong of us, but you know, the urge is there. For today's list, we're looking at some of the most annoying kids in all of gaming history. It doesn't matter if they're loud, bratty, or just a bit sticky looking, they're all welcome here. I'm the very short-tempered Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most irritating children in video games. Number 10, Baby Mario. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that babies have literally evolved to sound as annoying as possible? This is obviously great for them, as their infuriatingly loud screeches cannot be ignored by anyone but the profoundly deaf, but it's terrible news for anyone that can hear them. With that in mind, there's little wonder that players found Baby Mario of Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island fame to be incredibly irritating. In this 1995 platformer, Luigi has been kidnapped by Kamek, and it's up to friendly dinosaur Yoshi to traverse 48 levels across six different worlds in order to reunite baby Mario with his brother. By all accounts, Yoshi's Island was a fantastic game, and many critics gave it near-perfect review scores, but it was let down by one thing. Baby Mario's wailing. Indeed, if Yoshi becomes separated from Mario at any point, the little tyke will start to cry. And good golly is it grating. It certainly got players to rectify the situation quickly, but when it was at the cost of their eardrums, they were none too pleased about it. Oh, the pain! Where's the blowing mute button? Number 9, Your Rival, Pokemon Red and Blue. Now, don't get us wrong, we're well aware that for a game to be interesting, there needs to be some conflict. After all, it's not really very fun to see characters just going about their daily lives, having a pleasant time. Still, considering that Pokemon Red and Blue already had Team Rocket causing problems left, right and centre, did we really need some snot-nosed brat popping up every few minutes to challenge us to a battle that he invariably loses? There's no wonder so many players gave him names like Plop's Face. Players learn at the very beginning of Pokemon Red and Blue that they've had a rival ever since they were a baby. Hang on, they've been pitted against one another since they were children? What kind of shoddy parents would set this up? Anyway, I digress. Plop's face immediately sets to work on being a douchebag, picking whichever Pokemon will best the player's starter. As though that's not bad enough, his all-round attitude just plain stinks. He's rude, impatient, and perhaps most of all, still thinks he's better than the player, despite usually losing to them. Anyway, speaking of snot-nosed brats… Number 8. Zill. The Legend of Zelda – The Wind Waker. One of the most off-putting things about children is just how gross they are. Not only are they into absolutely everything and therefore get messy much more quickly than adults, but they're also incapable of cleaning themselves up. It's not their fault, of course, but still. With these points in mind, I refer you to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker's Zill, a small child with a severe nasal hygiene problem. This horrid chap lives on the outset island and constantly has a stream of mucus hanging from his face. Good God, can somebody get that child a tissue? A face that's enough to put you off your lunch isn't the only irksome thing about Zill either, as if he catches sight of Link, he'll come bounding over to him, and should Link stop, this disgusting little tyke will crash into him. As though Link doesn't have enough on his plate, what with his sister having been kidnapped by Ganon, he's now stuck with babysitting duties as well. Sadly, leaving Outset Island doesn't even rid Link of this horrid little git, because he shows up again snot and all in the minish cap. Ew. Number 7, Jason, Heavy Rain. It's a well-known fact that children are by and large idiots. Again, I know it's not their fault. 
they simply know less about the world because they haven't lived in it very long. Still, it doesn't stop said idiocy from being bloody annoying. And perhaps the most vexatious idiot kid of them all is Heavy Rain's Jason. While shopping one day, this dum-dum decides he's had enough to hang out with his folks and goes wandering. Naturally, his parents, Ethan and Grace, are somewhat worried by this, and Ethan goes on a frantic search for the boy. He finally finds Jason after spotting him on the other side of a busy road, but rather than waiting for his father to come and get him, Jason decides to hurl himself into oncoming traffic with reckless abandon. Now, not to victim blame here, but if it weren't for this absolute moron of a child, Ethan and Grace wouldn't have split up, Sean probably wouldn't have been abducted by a serial killer, and the poor lady behind the wheel of the car that hit him wouldn't have to live with the guilt of having run over a young boy. We probably shouldn't speak ill of the dead, much less a dead child, but hey, if the dunce cap fits… Number 6. Luke, Professor Layton Series as we mentioned in our previous entries, children are idiots, but there is a simple way to make them not idiots, and that's by teaching them things. With that said though, there is a time and a place for teaching children lessons, and it's not when lives are on the line. Throughout the Professor Layton series, the eponymous Top Hatter Professor is joined by his apprentice Luke, a young boy with a passion for puzzles. Sadly, unlike his master, he's not particularly good at them. Now, we've got to lay some of the blame for Luke being so annoying at the door of Leighton himself. After all, this supposed genius should know that if he's dealing with, say, a box that kills anyone that opens it, time is probably of the essence, and keeping an apprentice in tow will surely slow him down. Still, Luke's inability to quickly get to the bottom of the series' many brain teasers is only the tip of the irksome iceberg. And if the boy's general lack of know-how doesn't immediately get on your nerves, then his irritating voice certainly will. Wow, that's some puzzle all right. Just be quiet and let the grown-ups get on with their work in peace, you little nightmare. Number 5. Catalyst – Mass Effect 3 Do you know what's worse than finding out everything you've done was for nothing? Finding out everything you've done was for nothing from a child. Now, technically speaking, the catalyst that Commander Shepard encounters in Mass Effect 3 isn't actually a child, but is instead an AI that's taken on the form of a child, and a blooming irritating one at that. Shepard and his pals have been working to form an alliance that will build the Crucible to put a stop to the Reapers, a synthetic life form that harvests sentient spacefaring life every 50,000 years. However, as Shepard attempts to fire the Crucible, he's transported to the Citadel's pinnacle instead, and comes face to face with the Catalyst. This ethereal chump explains that it created the Reapers as a way to prevent synthetic life from wiping out organic life, as inevitably, synthetics will outgrow their creators and destroy them. Effectively, the conversation boils down to, you know that thing you're trying to destroy? Well, it's actually preventing a synthetic uprising. That would be hard to hear from an adult, but from a patronising kid, it's downright infuriating. Number 4. Balloon Kid – Spider-Man 2 Another major problem with children is the fact they've got no concept of the bigger picture. To them, each of their problems is the most important thing in the world, and it's difficult to get them to understand that their issues generally pale in comparison to those that others are dealing with. Case in point, the Balloon Kid from Spider-Man 2. Now, Spider-Man 2 for the Xbox, PS2 and GameCube was something of a rare beast, as it was a movie tie-in that wasn't a complete load of tosh. In fact, it was actually pretty good, ranking up review scores scores in the low 80s. Undoubtedly, one of the things that prevented the game from achieving perfect scores from critics was the Balloon Kid, whose cries can be heard all across Manhattan. Indeed, despite having Dr Octopus and his diabolical schemes to deal with, Spider-Man is frequently harassed by a small child who has lost their balloon. The cries of this butterfingered tyke can be heard far and wide, and the thing won't shut up until its airborne toy is returned. It's fine! We'll all just drop everything! Fate of the city be damned! To make sure you get your precious balloon back, kid! Number 3. Atreus, God of War it makes us a little sad to include God of War's Atreus on this list, because he starts out just fine. In fact, throughout the game's first act, we even feel somewhat sorry for the poor little sod. His mum's dead, his dad's got all the emotional intelligence of a brick, and he's not exactly in the best health either. Sadly, all of that goodwill goes right out of the window the second he learns that, like his father, he's a god, and he starts acting like an entitled dick. 
Despite withholding the information about Trace's lineage from him, Kratos ultimately comes to the realisation that hiding the boy's true nature is what's causing his health issues. However, after sharing the revelation, Atreus becomes arrogant to the point of being unbearable. He constantly goes on about the fact that, as gods, he and Kratos are better than everyone else. He murders Modi against Kratos' wishes, and perhaps most upsettingly, he's incredibly rude to Sindri, who has been nothing but kind to the pair to that point. In the end, Boy does see the error of his ways, but it's still hard to root for him after he spends so much of the game acting like a complete tool. Number 2, Nelkia, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim some kids are awful because their parents have made them that way. Others, however, are awful because that's just how they are, and no amount of intervention will change that. Then, there are those that are awful because they're being manipulated by evil forces. And Nelkia, a bratty NPC from The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, almost certainly falls into the latter camp. Still doesn't excuse his behaviour, though. Sadly, this jumped-up little oik is unavoidable if players wish to complete the Daedric quest, the Whispering Door, and retrieve the Ebony Blade. When the player character goes to speak to Jarl Balgruff the Greater to ask about the trouble in his family, he'll express concerns about his youngest son. He goes on to tell the player that the boy Nelkia has always been a quiet sort of chap, but lately, he's been refusing to talk to the Jarl and has become violent. He asks the player to go speak to the lad, who is one of the most unpleasant little gits we've ever come across, even threatening to tear the Yul's face apart. We'd like to see you try. No, seriously, go on, see how far you get. And number one, Evelyn. Resident Evil 7, Biohazard. If you've seen our list on the subject, you might remember that Resident Evil 7 Biohazard's Evelyn found a place among the 10 creepiest kids in video games, and although we wouldn't previously thought it possible, apparently you can be both unnerving and annoying in equal measure. Although she doesn't actually show up until towards the end of the game, Evelyn is, in fact, the primary antagonist of 2017's Resident Evil 7, having used her powers to mutate Jack and Marguerite Baker. Sure, she's a pretty fearsome foe, and we definitely wouldn't fancy meeting her down a dark alley at night, but by golly is she also hella irritating. The kid constantly bangs on about wanting a family, and punishes anyone that tries to leave her. We get it, being a bioorganic weapon must be pretty lonely business, but if you want to make friends, then whinging about it, and then possessing or killing people who don't do what you want, isn't the best way to go about it. Thankfully, by the time she shows up in Resident Evil Village, she's grown up a bit. Oh, who am I kidding? She's a smug, bothersome little brat in that game as well. 